we've covered enough important concepts and um, useful guidelines to actually start writing some programs in Rebel. And before we kick that off, we're going to do a quick review here just of some of the basics. Um, there are a couple main points that sort of make up the Rebel language. First of all is that um, Rebel has a ton of built-in functions. And we're going to take a look at, at how to use the built-in help to, to see those functions. Um, one of the things you can do um, to just use the interpreter for, for help is, if you look down here a little bit below, um, is type in uh, the word help for any function and the word what is useful in conjunction with that because it lists all the built-in words. So if we, if we type in what, we'll get a full list of all the existing words in uh, Rebel. And look through those and if you want to get help we just type the word help and then any existing word here for example and I type help for each and you'll see its use uh, the data types it takes, what it does, and so forth. You can also use uh, help with portion of a word. So uh, if, for example, you can't remember how a word is spelled or what exactly the word was, you can type, for example, help fo, and that will list all of the, all of the words that are um, included in the interpreter that have fo, whether they begin with it with FO or not. And then you can look up, again, that specific word that you're looking for. For example, if you couldn't remember the word for skip, you can type in FO and that'll give you all those FO words. And then there's the help for, for skip. And most importantly, the arguments it takes and what those arguments uh, need to be, what types of arguments. Uh, you can also look up help um, and, for example, have it list all of the function types. You put the exclamation point and that'll return all of the functions that are currently uh, defined in Rebel. Uh, you can have it list all of the data types that are uh, currently defined. That's another helpful way to use help. That, along with the, the word what, will help you get to uh, just about any, any word or um, uh, other element of the language that you need help with um, and you don't have to go looking um, in any reference materials, it's all available right there while you're programming. Um, so those functions are uh, a big part, knowing those functions are a big part of how, how you program in Rebel. And there are functions to, to do networking, there are uh, functions to do um, uh, image processing, there are functions to do file management, um, just about everything that, that you could want to do as a programmer. And it's important to understand how uh, things are ordered in Rebel. Basically you put a function and then you put the parameters that it takes, the arguments, the data that it takes afterwards. You do not need line endings um, and you can put empty space, um, new lines, tab spaces, however, uh, however you want to make things more readable. Text after a semicolon and before a new line is treated as a comment that's completely ignored. And you can get a lot done just by knowing the functions in Rebel and putting them in, into an order that does things that's useful for processing data the way you want. Um, also, there are a number of words that, that help um, perform conditional operations and uh, loops. Um, we had looked at uh, if and while and for and for each. And those things uh, help control um, program flow and how data is processed. Also, uh, Rebel has a number of built-in um, data types, things like uh, numbers, text, money values, times, uh, URLs, binary re representations of images and sounds. Those are all recognized natively and handled by, by Rebel, um, basically by putting something in a format, uh, for example, 5.32 a.m., Rebel knows that that's a time and will know how, how to add um, other time values to it appropriately. Um, also, network resources and, and uh, network protocols, internet protocols, uh, can be accessed natively. You don't have to import any modules. It will automatically uh, know how to connect to FTP res resources, email accounts, DNS services, and, and all those sorts of things. So you can do things like write a file to an FTP server just as, just as easily as you can write a file to 
uh, a local hard drive. And it's important to remember that the percent sign is used to refer to your local operating system drive, paths, and files. Okay, some of the other uh, important characteristics of Rebel, um, one of the most important things is that any data, um, any uh, function code, anything in Rebel, any code in Rebel, can be assigned a word label, and the way you do that is with the colon char character. Um, that can be assigned to constants, uh, variables, um, functions, any sort of data, including lists. Uh, basically, anything in Rebel can be assigned a word, and you can use that word um, to uh, refer to that, that group of code later on. Um, that's one of the things that makes uh, Rebel more like English language or natural human language. Um, and then another part of the um, uh, design of the language that's really important is that um, both data and code or action code again functions that sort of thing can be stored in blocks and the way you define blocks is just by using the bracket characters you include um, that data inside brackets and automatically um, uh, Rebel knows that it's a, a block which you can treat like a list and again, that, uh, that data can be uh, a single string of text, it can be, um, uh, you know, it can be a collection of URLs, it could be a collection of binary data images, um, sounds, uh, it could be a collection of functions, um, anything can be included in, in um, brackets. And you can use white space as you like. Um, anything, uh, any separate item inside of a block uh, will be treated as a, as a unique item, an individual item in the, in the list. Um, and in those lists you can use uh, a variety of built-in functions to do uh, sorting and searching and ordering and otherwise um, organizing the block. If you put actions inside of a block, uh, you can have those actions executed using the do word. Um, you can also use the does word to have them automatically ex executed every single time uh, that word is uh, come across in the interpreter. And you can use the func word to define um, functions that take parameters. And finally, one of the most important things about Rebel's built-in language um, dialects is the view layout dialect. And that lets you build um, basic GUIs very easily. View, view layout takes a block of information and anything that's included inside those brackets will be included on the uh, on the GUI and a lot of simple uh, items like buttons, text fields, and text lists um, and other facets having to do with those can be um, included in that block. You just include the facet right afterwards including the color, the position, uh, space in between those those items. Um, and very importantly, action blocks or blocks containing functions that you want executed when you uh, click on or otherwise activate those widgets um, should be enclosed in a separate block after the widget. Um, by doing that, when you either click on it or otherwise use the widget, it will execute those functions or those actions. Um, uh, face offset refers to uh, position in a selected widget face. Um, you can use that to, for example, move items around um, or to otherwise uh, change where uh, an a item in a GUI is, is positioned in the GUI. And because all these things are included and because um, of the, the freeform use of blocks and because data types are built in so naturally and networking um, functions are built in um, because GUIs are so easily created that lets you do a, a large majority of the things that you want to do with uh, with a programming language very sim simply and those building blocks are very easy to extend um, and in the next section what we're going to do is take a variety of uh, programs and work through creating them